a lot of people, including myself, were saying that R may have been on a bit of a downturn over the last couple years. But were we maybe a little bit too quick to pass judgment? Keep watching and we'll discuss this. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. Alright, so just a little over six months ago, I did a video comparing R and Python in the year 2020. So I do highly recommend watching that video before this one if you haven't already, because I do talk about things like the learning curve and the capabilities of these two languages, and by and large, all those comparisons are true today too. But I did also compare the popularity of these two languages, and I looked at a few pieces of information indicating that the tide of popularity could slowly be turning against R. So in particular, I looked at the Tyobi index, and I pointed out that in January of 2019, R was number 12 on that index, and by January of 2020, R had fallen all the way to number 18. For those of you who are totally unfamiliar with the Tyobi Index, it's a pretty well-known and commonly used indicator of various programming languages' popularity, and it's all based on relative search hits from things like Google, Wikipedia, Bing, etc., etc., etc. And that wasn't the only indication of that. I also pointed out this KD Nuggets poll that was done last year, and this was a survey they did of 1800 programmers asking what technology they often use for analytics, data science, and machine learning, and in two years, R fell from 56.6% to 46.6%, so a drop of exactly 10%, all while Python was rising. Python went from 59% to 65.8% in the same time period. KD Nuggets also put this together. So they tracked data science jobs listed on Indeed between the years 2017 and 2019, and they looked at how many of them mentioned the various different languages out there. And they did also mention that R did experience an upgrowth over time, but it was getting absolutely dwarfed by Python. So when we look at the entire time period here, there were nearly 30,000 jobs listing Python, then just over 25,000 jobs listing SQL, but it looks like under 15,000 jobs listed R. Sad. So that's where we stood at the beginning of this year, but there's some indication out there that the trends against R are beginning to reverse themselves. In particular, the thing that a lot of people are noticing now is that in the Tyobi index, R's position has absolutely skyrocketed. So if you look at the graph of the Tyobi index for R over time, notice at the beginning of this year, right when 2020 begins, R's share of overall search volume had fallen quite a bit to under 1% of all programming languages searches. But now it has absolutely surged to an all-time high. And not only that, if you look at the top, R is the number eight programming language of all time. And this is literally the highest ranking it has ever held in the Tyobi index. All of this might just indicate that something might be going on here. So let's dive into this a little bit further. Before I do that, just some asks. Number one, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do notice that a lot of my view volume comes from people who haven't subscribed to my channel, so please do that. Also, smash the like button to this video because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, I do have a link in the description of this video to my Patreon account. If you guys are willing to support me there, that would be massively appreciated. So the Tyobi index is not the only metric that's been done indicating that R might be on the rise. Let's turn our attention to the analysis firm Redmonk because they've created their own index for this kind of thing. Now their index is based, I think, on pull requests from GitHub as well as mentions on Stack Overflow. And there's a lot going on on this graph. But here, if you just look at the left side, notice you've got R starting in the number 17 spot all the way back in 2012. And while it's not at an all-time high here, it's risen to the number 13 spot now that we're into 2020. Note that the cutoff point of this analysis was June 2020 here, so it's a little bit earlier than the Tyobi index's cutoff, which is all the way up to August of 2020. Now, I think it's fair to point out that these things are not perfect measures of popularity, and in fact, they do suffer from their own certain types of biases. 
In particular, Red Monk is measuring activity from GitHub and Stack Overflow, and I think it's pretty fair to assume people from those two communities tend to be experienced developers and programming enthusiasts. So you're kind of leaving out people who are less experienced or they're newcomers to these languages who are certainly still using them, but they're a little bit shyer to share their code on there. As for the Tyobi index, you may have some bias there in favor of more difficult languages, as well as the languages that's a little bit more difficult to Google stuff for, so you have to do multiple queries. In particular, I know with R, there's a lot of people who have a little bit of difficulty getting into it, particularly if you come from a computer science rather than a statistics background. So these are all valid points against these indices. So let's look at what's going on in the industry. Well, you've seen this graph already if you've seen my video reviewing Anaconda's State of Data Science report, but they found that R was the second most popular language in the data science community, out of all of the languages they surveyed, that is. And this is based on a sample size of 1,592, and it's across a variety of industries as well as academia. And to be fair, R is a very distant second to Python, but it's still got 47% of respondents saying they sometimes to always use it. Compare that with Python, which has 91% of respondents saying the same, but still. I haven't been able to find any updates on the job market that have been done in the last couple months. However, in the past, it's generally been the case that R enjoys a lot of preference in research and academic environments, as well as in the healthcare industry. Now, there have been a couple theories floated about R's increase in popularity over this time period, and these theories come courtesy of the Tyobi CEO, Paul Jansen. So let's discuss both of these, and then I have my own theory. His first theory is that technologies like SAS and Stata and SPSS are done, and the increase in R's popularity comes at the downfall of those technologies. And that's certainly a believable and predictable turn of events. There are just more and more organizations out there that are beginning to realize the value of open source programming. And there are certain industries for which SAS is a little bit sticky, but even that is beginning to diminish a little bit. His other theory, which I have seen floated in some other circles, is that all of this is due to the disease that's been making its way around the globe throughout this year. Obviously, the healthcare and pharmaceutical industries need to do a lot of data analysis so that we get a vaccine developed this year. But even independently, there's been so much data analysis and hackathons and dashboards and visualizations of this disease that have occurred, at least I've begun to notice them since March of this year. So the theory is because there's been so much of this activity, it's given R a bit of a temporary boost. Now I'm a little bit less sold on this theory than the other one, because the number of independent analyses out there has gone down quite a bit since March and April, when the disease was at its newest and its scariest to most people. But over the same period, R has just continued to grow. But just more broadly speaking though, when we start talking about trends in industry as well as what programming languages are beginning to come in and out of favor, it is sort of impossible to divorce that from the pandemic and the ensuing economic slowdown that's happening around most parts of the world right now. So the next question is, how has the pandemic really affected data science jobs? Well, data scientist jobs have taken a beating, at least in the United States, just like the rest of the job market. And job postings for data scientists are definitely way down from the previous year, although some companies like Google, Amazon, Apple, and such are definitely taking advantage, and they've ramped hiring up. Now, as you guys probably all know by now, the data science field is really dominated by those two languages. R and Python. However, the broader tech sector outside of data science is much more diverse. When you have people getting laid off and they're interviewing for new jobs and they're Googling things, it's all over the place. You've got people using C, Java, JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, PHP. I mean, it's all over the place. 
Whereas layoffs that occur in the data science field could get people who were previously just exclusively Python users starting to take a second look at R because they have to consider a new job for which R is just part of what they use. So this could be a possible reason why you see R experiencing a huge increase in popularity while other programming languages appear to be roughly flat. So back to our original question, is R surging in popularity? And honestly, I do think the evidence for this at this time is pretty mixed. I think the Tyobi index and things like that are informative, but they do need to be taken with a grain of salt as well as follow-up analysis. And right now, you simply can't separate things like this from the short-term realities that we're facing because of the pandemic and the economic slowdown that's resulted. Once those things are over, we may know this for sure. I also think it remains pretty clear that Python is the leader of the data science world right now. Every survey that I've seen done in the last several years indicates that. One thing we can take away though is that the people who were more pessimistic and they were expecting R's demise were not correct about that. Again, R is beloved in academia, in research, in the healthcare and pharmaceutical industries. Not to mention, people with statistics backgrounds find it incredibly easy to pick up, at least most of the time. So it really isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's my preferred choice to this day because of its visualization capabilities, the notebooks it has, as well as shiny apps. So in the end, if you're a current or aspiring data scientist, I always recommend learning SQL before you learn either R or Python. And then, honestly, just pick one, R or Python. Get really good at that one. It doesn't really matter which one you pick so much as that you do pick one of them and you get good at it. And R remains a fantastic choice if you want to go that route in 2020. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button. Also leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think is going on with R. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.